if my daughter had married, my son-in-law would have been the head of all Freemasons. And here's JFK making his pilgrimage to the pyramids, just like Grant made a pilgrim, Ulysses Grant made a pilgrimage to the pyramids, and so did uh, Charles Taze Russell and many of the others. This is what we're going to discuss about uh, in depth. Uh, this woman here, Marilyn Monroe, was the first uh, presidential sex model slave that they allowed the public to see. I believe in these pictures here, we're watching her switch personalities. James Manfield, who was under mind control, uh, she was a, um, one of uh, JFK's girlfriends, and she's a member of LaVey's Church of Satan, and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. was also under LaVey's control, a member of a Church of Satan, and also a good friend of JFK. Here's Lee ka uh Illuminati billionaire in Hong Kong who has quite a bit of things in uh, Canada. And here is Winthrop Rockefeller. He supplied money to finance Clinton. He is reported to have the world's largest porn collection. And here's Guy de Rothschild who uh, in, in French, we might say Gita, and I believe that this man is, is uh, probably the father of either the Antichrist or the Antichrist John the Baptist. And this is his son David over here in one of their mansions. And here is Billy. And this sign using the left hand, this for some people could mean I love you, sign with the left hand, sign of Satan, but it's got a more significant uh, meaning. This is ha one of the ways that they uh, induct people into trance who are slaves. And then here, Adolf Hitler and his grandmother. His grandmother was impregnated by the Rothschilds in Vienna, and then Hitler's father was paid money to change his name from Schickelgruber to Hitler. Now we're going to talk about the mind control. And you will notice that I saved this for last. I realized that even if I spent all three hours on this topic, I could barely scratch the surface. And I was very reluctant to open up this Pandora's box um, and, and oh, start talking about something that's so vast and complex a subject that I can barely pull the pieces together to make it a coherent subject for you without raising a lot more questions. But recently there's been a number of books come out on the mind control, but most of them are very superficial. You really want to get this to understand it better. Someone who got this uh, said, Fritz, after I got this I was so excited about the subject and I got a whole bunch of other books on the subject and they all turned out to be vague. And I said, yes, I know that's the case. And another uh, uh, illustration about this book is somebody who came in off the streets who knew nothing about anything and was a teenager, picked this up and couldn't put it down. And 20 pages later, I had to be torn from it. <clears throat> now, you may be wondering, how do they do this mind control? Well, the book will explain it. That's why I wrote the book. I can't go into the details of how they do this mind control. But I can say simply that it is a very sophisticated combination of every mind control technique that has ever been thought up. Okay? Now, if you talk or listen to someone in the CIA, sometimes you will hear them say, well, we tried behavioral modification, but it only works in such a percentage of the cases. And we tried this method of mind control, but it only works in a small percentage of the cases. And we tried this, and they make it appear like they've discarded all of these. The truth is, is if you 
uh, take this method of mind control, which only works, let's say, in 70% of the cases, and, th and match it to, uh, to this type of mind control, which only works in 70% of the cases, and match it to this, and make a group package, by the time you've gone through all these many different types of mind control, you create something that totally locks the person into your control. This is my co-author. <clears throat> now, when they begin with a child, they uh, start traumatizing it. The human mind is like a computer. You've probably heard uh, people say that the, uh, the human mind is like a computer and that if you've got all of the computers in the world and put them together, then in some functions the human mind would outstrip it. In order to make computers functional, they had to learn how to section off memory. When you reboot your computer, there's memory there that you can't touch. The Illuminati learned centuries ago how to section off memory within the human mind. And it's done with amnesia walls. And the amnesia walls are built by trauma. If you look at a timeline here, and here's a point in time when, let's say, you're in war and your buddy gets killed and it's a trauma to you, you may take and build amnesia walls around that particular event in your mind. That's called post-traumatic stress syndrome. The Illuminati learned this trick many centuries ago, and they traumatize a person until they shatter their mind into thousands upon thousands of disassociated states. Okay, it's like taking a mirror and throwing it against the ground and breaking it into thousands of pieces. And then they know how to go in and find each of those little pieces and with that little disassociated part of mind, memory, they, they, through programming, build that each piece into what they want. Perhaps they want that piece to be a personality. Then they will give that piece of the mind an identity, a history, um, a job, and the full works. And they'll also attach a hypnotic cue that they can pull that peace of mind, that alter, that personality, they're called alters or personalities, so that they can pull that to the front of the mind. Then they build very complex alter systems. My co-author here, her mind was shattered 30,000 ways, and then to build an alter system, the front of her alter system had 13 by 13 grid, which is 169 personalities. And then there were 13 sections of that. And all of these have amnesia walls between them and all have uh, 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 hypnotic cues attached to pull them to the mind. That's just a small part of her system. There are many hidden worlds as she had two programmers competing against each other for control of her and putting in hidden worlds. And basically what you have with these people is they've made a mess of their minds They've shattered them into many pieces, and they've tried to scrape up a few things and uh, pull together this mess. So you have, like, if you're comparing this to a store, you've got a nice storefront, but if you go out behind the store, there's a lot of garbage out there and a big mess. They like to create the best fronts for these systems of altars. They like to hide what they're doing. They like to give them, they like to create a personality or several personalities to hold the body that have the most legitimate, the best front that they can imagine. So I like to ask audiences, what do you think the favorite occupation is for men in the Illuminati? And very often times they say things like judges, lawyers, politicians. No, people, the favorite occupation is being Christian clergy.